As you might have noticed, a number of our quick tips, most of them in fact, are done with oil paint. And that's simply because I'm showing you a principle and oil paint is the e easiest method to work with to do that. Well, we've gotten a number of requests for pastels and for watercolor, so I got this idea. I'm going to take a single principle and in three quick tips in a row, I'm going to use that same principle. So today's quick tip will be in watercolor. This is number 186. Number 187, which is the one following this one, will be pastels. And then I'll show you how to do the same principle with oils. So here we go with watercolor. So the principle I'm going to be working with in these three quick tips is the principle of working with edges. And the, the subject I'm going to use is a single tulip. So working with edges, there are three major edges, the lost edge, the soft edge, and the sharp edge. So I have it written right here. My intention is to get a lost edge, a soft edge, and a sharp edge with three, these three materials. So it's not about painting the tulip. The tulip is simply um, something to use to make this happen. It, it's simply our resource, but it's not the subject. The subject of this is how do, how do we get lost edges, soft edges, and sharp edges with watercolor. All right, so we'll begin, by, as we would with all of these, we'll begin just a very, 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 very general sketch of the tulip, as we always are uh, in doing watercolor. I find that it's always good to start out with just a very general sketch, not a detailed sketch, but what I'm doing here is simply establishing or establishing perimeters for myself as to where these shapes will go. And so I just do a very quick, um, very quick general sketch. And, uh, and if you are, if you, you might notice here that I use the same method for doing these sketches as I do um, for in the in the drawing. Well, the drawing tips, where I use the, the phantom method of, of um, finding the shapes and uh, more or less the gestural method for putting the shapes down. So we have that edge here and then we have this edge here. And, okay, I uh, need to give my attention to the shape now instead of talking to you. So here we go. And this will be another purpose here. I'm not really trying to get a rendition of the tulip. Uh, I'm using, you know, I'm pretty much in the ballpark here. Let's put that little stem on it here. I'm pretty much in the ballpark of the of the tulip shape here. Maybe the proportion may be off a little bit, but I'm not worried about that. <clears throat> I'm not sweating that because my purpose is the is is to get these three edges. Now I'm going to set some perimeters here, so I don't cr go crazy. Uh, set some perimeters, and from here we're ready to go. So I'll put my pencil aside. Now, with watercolor. With watercolor, we have to do some thinking before we start working. Uh, and the thinking has to be from general to specific. Now, what I know about watercolor is that in order to get lost edges, well, no, let's say in order to get soft edges, I must work damp into damp. The brush has got to be damp. The paper's got to be damp. I know that in order to get sharp edges, I need to work wet on dry. The paper needs to be dry. My brush is wet or damp. Now, for getting lost edges, uh, I, I can do either, but the lost edges are going to depend. It can depend upon the wet and wet, but it also can depend upon the value. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Now, I'm just going to work very generally, and I'm going to pull out onto the palette. This is the way I always pull out watercolor. I start with very wet color in my palette, on my palette, and I always pull out the color, the colors I'm going to use. I pull those out in as rich and thick as I can, not in watery, not wa not watery uh, portions, but rich and thick as I can. So here I'm going to pull out. This is a sap green. I'm going to pull out an ultramarine blue. I'm looking at the background here. What colors will I need for the background? Now I could. I could get more specific than that, but I'm not. I'm going to make, as far as the colors I'm using in, in this demo, I'm going to just uh, keep it simple because it's the edges I'm aiming for, not the color. 
So I'll just keep the, sim the color simple. Now for in the uh, the colors I want to need here, I'm going to pull out um, something that a color is called quinacridone violet. You see, I'm pulling out very very rich, and just depositing on the palette there. Quinacridone violet. And I'm also going to pull out some alizarin crimson. I see some some kind of sort of a brighter red here. So I'm going to pull out a little alizarin crimson, very rich. I know a lot of uh, teachers will pull out their watercolor in these watery piles, but uh, that never worked for me, so that's not what I do. Now, let's see, am I going to need to be able to darken that any? I might. Uh, so I'm going to pull out a little bit of Carbazole Violet right here. I may or may not use it, but I'm just going to pull that right here. In, just in case I need to darken. I may not use it. Okay, there's the first step for watercolor. Always in watercolor, it's important to get the palette, pull the colors out on the palette first and get them ready to use. For the second step in the watercolor, um, I like working wet in wet and uh, to begin with, so I'll begin the whole thing wet and then uh, bring it to a finish as it dries. So the second step there is to wet the surface. Now, I, I, I like to do this. I like to use a little fine mister. This is just water. So I usually start out a little fine mister and I'll mist the whole surface with water and then with my brush I spread that out. And while I'm spreading that out I'm looking, uh, I get so I can see the gloss because the gloss tells me how wet the paper is. But see all this is important to edges. So uh, in order to get into the composing of things, edges, uh, 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 the way we use edges is primary, uh, very important to our composing. So the, um, it's important to know our materials and know what they will do. Now, now I go get into the technique of it, and I'm going to begin by giving a an overall overall uh, wash. Let's get a little bit of red in that. Uh, uh, an overall very pale wash to the entire surface. Just and, and uneven. Uh, not, I'm not trying to get that even. Now, why am I doing that? Because I want color harmony. I want color harmony in the whole thing. And I see that in the photograph, somebody has photoshopped it. I got that, of Pix uh, got that from pixabay.com, where I get a lot of these little reference photographs that I use uh, for demonstrating a principle. Um, somebody's photoshopped that. Well, I'm not interested in their Photoshop version. I'm interested in color harmony. So I gave the whole surface because this is so different. The green background is so different from this. I gave the whole surface a very pale wash of this color. This is the dominant color. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to start the background first. Now, this will give me the opportunity for both the, uh, the soft and uh, for the soft edges and the lost edges. So, I'm going to do a little thinking ahead of time. Now, in this photograph, it's sort of misleading. That we, obviously, the light is right in here. The shadow portion is right in here. So, if the light is right in here, that means that probably this area right over here is, is maybe lighter. And so, instead of going with this as I see it value-wise, I want to make this area over here lighter. I'll make this area over here a little darker. Not much lighter necessarily. So I'm going to load the brush and as I move the brush in, I move in just to the edge of my, my paint and I pull out just, as, just the amount of paint I need for the value I'm going after. And since I want that to be kind of light, you can tell against the palette there that I'm not pulling out a, a lot of value. Uh, I'm keeping, you control the watercolor, you control the value by the amount of water that's in it. And so um, I'm, it's kind of like adding white to it. And, and now I'm going to pull a little bit of ultramarine blue in that too because that's kind of cool. And here's what I want to do. Now I'm looking at it and I'm seeing that the gloss is going away. That's what happens with watercolor. It evaporates. The gloss is going away. And because that gloss is going away, I'm going to pull some excess water right here from the brush to give me a little bit more control with the edges. Now I'll try not to get in your way but what I want to do here now is just begin to apply strokes in the negative where I shape. Look at, all right, now in watercolor two, you have to uh, you have to reload the brush periodically. So I'm just trying. I'm, as I said, I'm keep I want purposely to keep keep this lighter than this is. So each time I will take my paper towel and right here, right here where the water's gathered, I'm just pulling the excess water from the brush, and that is show that is allowing me to control. Um, to prevent, 
prevent back runs and control <coughs> the uh, the shape better without it running into without it running into the image itself. So I'm going to use just that. I'm going to use that uh, that method, and I'll move very rapidly. Now I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it gradually. I see. I have to work faster now because now I'm seeing that the more and more I have to look sideways to see this, but I'm seeing that there's barely any gloss left. So now I'm going to I'm going to load the brush a little bit darker and just pull that color, both colors, into the brush, and I'm just going to now because the paper is is getting drier, I can have the brush wetter. And that's how we control watercolor. We can we control what happens with watercolor between the dryness of the paper and the dryness of the brush. So as the paper starts to get drier, uh, the brush can be wetter. And as the paper is wetter, the brush needs to be drier. That is for controlling color and value. So, and I'm not, as I said before, I'm not trying to make up exactly what I'm seeing there. I'm simply forming that shape, forming that positive shape by working in the negative. And so, and then now I'm looking and I see all the gloss is gone. If I put the back of my hand, it's still very, it's still very cool, so I know it's still very damp. And as long as it's still very damp, I can get soft edges around this positive shape. And if you'll notice the way I'm pulling these edges, I'm uh, pulling these strokes. I'm pulling them in various directions here. All right. Uh, now here, I'm going to get, I'm going to make this a little darker. Now see I ran out of ultramarine blue and when I run out I'll just pull some more on in it like here. Now I want to get this a little darker so I'll add more paint, less water. This is uh, as I'm moving around I'm seeing that because the surface is uh, no longer glossy I can be a little bit more flexible with, with uh, the amount of water in the brush. If I, I, can, if I want the uh, value very dark then I'll have less water and more paint. If I want the failure to be light, I have less paint and more water. And I'll show you that right here. Now I see up here, you see, when I start getting that kind of texture, I know that the paper is really getting dry. And so what I'll do there, just put just a little bit more water in the brush, but don't want it running because if I do, I'll get a back run and I'll simply pull this, blend this shape in. Now I have the background area Starting, I've got to keep going because let's see. Yes, this is still damp, and that's a very good thing. Um, so now I'm going to uh, go in and I'm going to form the shadow. And here's where I begin to think about edges. Really, now I was forming edges here. All these, especially over in here, end up giving me potential for being soft if I want them soft. Um, and so I'm going to move into the quinacridone violet here. And I think uh, I'm going to wait. Maybe, maybe I will. Go ahead and add just a little bit of that uh, that dark purple. And what I'm going to do here is to set the brush right next to that edge and pull it along the shape, just like that. And then I'm going to make another stroke that kind of overlaps that, set it along the shape, just like that, just like that. And what I'm looking for, and do the same thing here. I still got enough color in the brush. And here I'm going to go that way and this way. Now. Let's see. Okay, that's still that's going to bleed a little bit, and that's going to give me that uh, potential for a soft edge there. So now I'm going to pull here, here. Now you notice that edge is beginning to get harder. When the edges begin to get harder, that means that the, the paper is getting dry. And sometimes in watercolor, um, if if you're uh, if you're still wanting those, that's going to give a back run because I was talking, not paying attention. Sometimes in watercolor, if you want to keep those edges soft. You just you might reach a point where you're just going to have to let the whole thing dry, get thoroughly dry, and then re-wet the surface and 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 then continue. Um, so let's see if that's going to happen here. I hope it doesn't happen. We'll just have to see. All right, now we get into this area. Um, what I want to happen there? I'm going to go very very light. Now when I go light, I have less paint here, and I could do this sort of thing. I can pull the water in here. Now this is going to be very light. But I'm going to pull the excess water out here, load the brush, and then let me hit this edge right here and come down. You see that gives me that very light stroke. And now, uh, what am I getting as far as edges ago? Well, as far as edges ago. Um, I'm going to continue that into this section because I want this section to be wetter. 
Now let me see about what's happening with those edges there. These edges are remaining kind of sharp. And I'm going to, before that gets too dry, before I continue, um, I want to keep this edges, these edges right here a little bit softer. Because I want the edges a little softer here, I'm going there with just a bit of a damp brush. And see, I kind of have to just be careful, very gently, very gently touch. All right, now if it gets dry, I can still soften a little bit, but, um, but not much. So I'm going to keep this edge soft right here. Now right in here, right in here, while this is still getting dry, so you see we kind of have to work. Um, you have to deal with that while you're working. But right in here, I would like to see a lost edge right in there. And what's happening right now is we have a very sharp edge. To get that lost edge, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move back. Let's see, has that dry? Yeah, it's still very damp. You have to test it every now and then with the back of your hand. I'm going to go back with a really, really, I want, I want a value that matches the value of that, that purple there. So I'm going to really, really dark. And here's what I'm going to, I'm going to push it right up against it. Aha! Boom, boom, that works. And that's going to give me that potential for a lost edge. I'll pull that on down and let it blend in. Let's get that, um, pull it, pull a little bit, I have that just a little bit wet. And I want that to blend in this direction, in this direction, in this direction. All right, now, now I have the ability to make that a lost edge by moving, pulling the excess water out of the brush going to move just a little bit of the same color back into the tulip and pull it right up into it. Just let that flow right up into it. Now that edge, I can watch it. Is it going to lose? Is it going to get lost? I want it to get lost. I'm going to piddle with it just a little bit here. I want it to really just go away. Okay, so I'll just kind of play with that just a minute. Uh, you have to be careful about that, that playing. Now, see, it's beginning to go away now. Now it's beginning. That's what you have to keep an eye on watercolor because it continues to do stuff after you, after you uh, move the brush out of it. All right. Now, uh, while that edge is, while well, we're checking to see what that edge is doing, I want to go ahead. Now I've got soft edge here, and we have potential for lost edge here. I want to go ahead now. I'm going to. Uh, I've let this area get. It's still damp, so, uh, but I can still handle this. I'm going to, to go for a. A sharp edge and uh, so I'll do that that needs to be kind of a middle value not middle it's kind of a low to middle so what I'll do here is I'll position the brush right on the edge and just pull it down oh uh, yeah that's gonna work I had a little too wet so if I got a little too wet I'll just pull some of that water out well that ends up being soft okay I said I wanted a hard I said I wanted that to be a hard edge but let's leave it soft for a little while and see what happens so um so um, we'll just do this. Uh, now this side, and this is something else that often will happen with watercolor, one area will be drier than the other. And see, you have to deal with all these things while you're dealing with the medium. Dealing with the medium is part of what makes that so much fun. So I'm going to now go ahead and just a little uh, form a, a little bit more towards the striations of that and well, let's see what I need to do right here okay I'll push the brush here follow the striations I see that that was very damp so what I can do here is to pull the excess water out and let's see push the edge here there we go there's that sharp edge I was going for now I'll do that again here now so not only did I get the sharp edge right there and right here now I get and now I'm getting a sharper edge because I have less water in the brush and, um, and so I'll just do a little bit more right there okay so I've got no oh, this ends up being kind of a lost edge back here and um, let me give just a, a little I could still give a little bit more texture as that's because that is drier up there I can hit the edge of that and just pull down like that and give a little bit more of that texture but I'm not trying to finish here and this uh, I think I'll make a I think I'll keep that a really hard edge back there so I think what I'll do there I was going to go back with um, go back a little bit more color and to make that edge even harder I'm going to go back into the the dark green and work in the negative and just push it right up against it and have the 
have the brush there we go right there have the brush almost dry and almost no water in it and I'll just push pull that edge have that edge to be hard harder and more the more I do that then the harder the edge can be and as I look at the photo I'm seeing that that really is dark back there so what we know is that uh, if we have a dark dark against a light light and we have a very sharp edge there that that will be one of the hardest edges we can make of course that will be where the eye automatically goes so let me just give a little bit more emphasis to that it seems to be going away that was wetter than I thought it was um, one more little thing here and that will be oh I see I need to do the stem so the stem uh, the stem needs to not I want to keep the stem sort of just uh, blending in the whole thing so I'll just do, just come down with a mixture of the two colors there and we'll get the stem showing and the only other thing I want to do here is I'm going for going with another brush and I'm going to just use the damp brush and I'm going to pull a little bit of there we go color away from that tip and give that edge whoops give that edge a little bit more hardness this uh, see what happened there I moved the brush into there we go I moved it into the green and pulled it out so that gives that a little bit more accent here now let's see do I have that lost edge I was looking for right there um, I'm gonna put just a gonna do just a little bit I really want this lost really want to lose and the way I'm doing that is by dark into dark dark value into dark value so I've got a a dark in the negative positive right here and I've got a dark a dark in the negative right here and if I get those two really there we go there we go that's getting more in the ballpark let's give a little bit of follow through right over here um, now we can see the edge more distinct so what I'm going to do is to pull all the water of the brush here and just use the edge of the brush and weave those edges together just like this and that begins to give us more of that lost edge I'm looking for alright so that that's just a little study and it shows you one method for getting lost edge soft edge and sharp edge in watercolor if you found this helpful and you'd like to know more uh, go to DianeMize.com and look through all of our video tutorials. You'll find that we address a number of composing things there. And if you have something you'd like for me to show, leave us a comment right down here and we'll put it on our schedule. And there's your quick tip.